and I feel a bit flat, I need to move some energy. So I might like just put on music and dance, start to learn about all these basic tools that are there for people, but we're not taught at a young age that everyone has an aura. And if you don't protect that, you take on people's shit. This is where learning to love all of yourself, the dark, the light, all of it, just getting as much information is power. So if you can kind of just like get as much information on whatever it is, the topic that you want to do or what whatever area you want to to go in, like just soak up as much knowledge and information as you can so you know the right people to go and ask for help for. Welcome back to the Frankie Lee Podcast. Today, guys, we have a sensational guest, a real um, inspiration to a lot of young women and men out there that are looking to get into the app game, to blow it up. Former founder of Bloom, who sold out, co-founder of WellWeb with Chloe Zepp, Miss Molly Jane. Welcome to Thank the Frankie so D podcast. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you for having me. I'm I'm buzzed to have I'm buzzed buzzed to have you here. Yeah. Buzzed. I'm buzzed. I'm so excited because I think this is gonna be I th- I just got a feeling about this podcast. I think I, it's gonna be good. It's gonna vibe. It's gonna vibe. Yeah. I think before we even start with you, I think we should just go into a little bit of a backstory because obviously you started out as just a social media manager of a mm. of a tan company. That's right. How did you go from like being a social media of a tan company to even getting into the app space on your own with yeah. like that? So I think even prior so I worked as a social media manager at Bondi Sands. So prior to that I actually lived in London for two years. Did you? And I was a nanny. Yeah. No way. And then I came back to Australia and I started working in a solarium. Do you know what a solarium yeah, 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 is? Yeah, 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 like a sun... The sunbed shop. That's right. Yeah, when they were legal. And anyways, the owner of the suntan, the sunbed shop, he is now the owner of Bondi Sands. Oh, right. So when so when they shut down his business, he's like, I've got to create Well, they didn't else. even shut down his business. He kind of forecasted what was going to happen with the industry. And he started like something on the side, an at-home fake tan that, you know, was affordable, good quality, that people could just do at home when they couldn't get to a salon to have a spray tan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just like on reception there and he said to me, do you mind doing a couple of Facebook posts for this brand? And I'm like, yep, that's fine. I even said to him, can we start an Instagram page? And at that so this is like 2000 and... Like this was like, yeah, probably like eight years ago now. Yeah. So like so when I said, can I start an Instagram page? He was like, what's Instagram? And now Bondi Sands is one of like the biggest tanning brands. On in, Instagram. Yeah. On Instagram in the world. They've got over a million followers. Um, you know, I really feel like social media and what we did for brands, influencers, like pushing boundaries with product launches and things like that. Like we really were innovative in that area. Give me some of the ways that you were innovative at the time. So we launched new products, like simple, basic fake tan products, like on private jets. We would fly to Ibiza and we'd bring all of the top influencers from all over the world. And I was like Molly from Bondi Sands. So you know, I was on their YouTube channel. I would do live streams for when we would launch things. So yeah, we'd be in Ibiza and I'm on the social media, like to 50,000 people launching this new product. So you're building a personal brand off the back of working for a brand as well. Yeah, I like that. I like that. But what kind of made Bondi Sand so successful in those early days was seeing like a personal side to the brand. Yeah, the face. Yeah, well, I wouldn't, like they never officially call me the face of Bondi Sands, but it did. But just putting a human touch to it actually blew it up. Exactly, like to a degree. So, you know, I learned so much at Bondi Sands and because I was with this startup company at the very beginning, yes, I may have been the social media manager, but I actually wore the hat of every role to begin with. Um, you know, I would learn how to write EDMs. I learned about digital marketing. I learned about distribution. I learned about business structure, copywriting, everything like, you know, everything. And I did not realize how valuable 
all of this would be until I started my own company. So is that something that is that one piece of advice that you'd give to anyone younger out there that's listening to this is to, sure. go, is to go and work in a role like that where you get this exposure to all these skills so they can build yeah. them up? A lot of like I know a lot of young women that I talk to, you know, they're in a job and they know they can do more and they know that they've been put on earth to do more. However, everything's perfect as it is and Bondi Sand served its purpose for me and, you know, it gets to a point, like, and this is what happened, it kind of, so while I was working at Bondi Sands, towards the end of the time there, that's when I call it my version of rock bottom happened. So my marriage fell apart, everything in my life just went to shambles basically. So from that, I started diving into personal development to the point where every cell in my being was made up different to who I was like a year ago. So you literally reinvented yourself. I reinvented myself. I I hadn't like worked out exactly who I was going to be, but I just knew I was different. And as a result of that, I knew Bondi Sands wasn't for me anymore. I knew I had got everything that I needed out of Bondi Sands. So my intuition was telling me, Move forward in some other Even direction. Even though I couldn't see what the direction was. So I literally quit Bondi Sands. I had, I think, one more pay round to go because my marriage had fallen apart. Like there was money issues there and stuff like that as well. I had no money. I had one more pay round left and I quit because I just knew with every cell in my being that I had to quit, but I didn't know why and I didn't know where I was going to go. So that was say April yeah by July or August that same year I had launched Blue Map that's mad and when I quit Bondi Sands you didn't didn't even have an idea what you did like tech me building an app like of what yeah well you had money problems as well didn't you I, I had no money I had zero dollars. Yeah, I had zero dollars. I had like three do- – I remember one – like in that period, like I had this one choice once whether I should like put petrol in my car to go see my friend like in another town for her birthday or eat that day. Like that's where I was at. Really? And you, and obviously you've got you got family in Australia and everything like that, so you could have got support from them as well. I could have, but I am very proud. Yes, yeah, so you're a bit stubborn about it. I'm very stubborn about it and, you know – like I've spoken about this on many podcasts, when I did hit my rock bottom moment, like I did a lot of that by myself. And in hindsight, I probably should have reached out to other people more. But my situation was a little bit different that I was scared to talk to people about it because... Had, had was, was that scaredness though because people had perhaps told you in your family that you probably got married too young? No. Wasn't nothing to do with that? I didn't get married young. We were together for 10 years before we got married. Ah, right. Okay, okay. So you married later on through the stage. Yeah. Ah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was with my high school sweetheart for 14 years. And yeah, we probably got married like the later end of that. But yeah. Yeah. Was was there was there any like um, family saying, "Oh, don't get married, don't no. just concentrate on something else"? Everyone was really supportive. Everyone was really supportive, and it was fine. Like everything, yeah, went the way it was meant to go. Um, yeah. And then you had the obviously the involvement into obviously doing what you what your purpose was, which is obviously to build this app. That's right. So you know, just to touch on how. Um, you know, without going into too much detail around what happened with the marriage, because a yeah. lot of trauma and a lot of bad things really did happen, and it um, broke me. It broke me to the point where, you know, I contemplated suicide and got to that point many times. I can count over 10 times. Like, I'd planned it out, ready to go. You literally planned it out. Planned it out, Yeah. And the only reason I didn't was because I didn't want to let my family down and I knew they wouldn't be able to handle it if I left Earth, basically. So I I only touch on that because that's how low it got for me. And Yeah, some deep stuff. It was deep really you. deep. And so I can see it in you when you're talking about it. I can see how I see how like it gets like it hits you. Yeah. I'm I'm sat here, I'm like, fuck, I feel that. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I feel like, like Yeah. It can't be easy for a woman to go through something where she's 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 
she's invested so much time into what she felt was her childhood sweetheart mm. and was her lifetime partner mm-hmm. to only find to only see it fall down at some hurdle yeah you know and not really you think to yourself oh you know is what's meant for me then you know is it does that mean there's no men left for me or something that's probably some of the things you're probably going through right well yeah I think it was more because I got with this guy when I was 17 so I was a child I built my adult life based around his thoughts and how he thought you were meant to be in the world, not right. on how I thought right. I was meant to be in the world. So the key thing here is for everyone listening is to to build yourself around your own purpose and without then, a doubt. Because that's that's the mic drop right there. That is the mic drop right there. And what a wonderful lesson. Hindsight is the most wonderful thing in the world. Like yes, he played a role in a lot of the damage that was done. However, I still played a role in it. And I love looking back and being like, okay, I was really codependent or I was, I did people please so much that I put all of my eggs into this basket and I forgot about me. I didn't. So when my world fell apart, I was forced to look at me, but I didn't even know where to begin. Yeah, because you didn't know who you were. I didn't know who I because was. Because you, you, you were just doing, you were just being the woman that, that he expected you to turn up That's as well. Right. At, but you never turned, you never turned up to the world and said, hey, I'm Molly and this exactly. is who I am. And every time I would attempt to try that within the relationship, looking back now. You get pushed down. Yeah? That's right. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I'm just so grateful that I did get through that dark time because the work I've done on myself and the woman that I am now, like I'm so proud of me and I am, I'm like, I love myself in yeah. the most non arrogant way. way. In a beautiful yeah, way. Yeah. Like I love all of my qualities, the good, the bad, the dark, the light, because it makes all of me. And I have spent time nurturing all of that and working on all of that. And now I know me so, so well that it's almost – gone to the other end where it's so scary that I don't need anyone. But that that's so powerful though because it just means you don't have to attract any shit into your life. No, that's right. If I hang out with somebody, it's because I want to hang out with them. Oh, legend. Thanks, darling. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it is. Like yeah, I, yeah. My first priority is me and my time. Once I've had my time and I feel full, then I can give to others and I am so selective with who I choose yeah, but who but who can't give to someone? Someone who's empty because they've just given everything to everyone already. That's you know what right. I mean? So you got to make sure you fill your own cup up first, and make sure you give yourself some self love. Yeah, yeah. Like I had some experiences to you, like different, different, different topics and different things that led to it. But it's like you find yourself not not you find yourself helping so many other people, but you but you don't you neglect to help yourself. Yeah, and and it's like give too much exactly so even from a business point of view now like my staff know not to contact me in the morning until like after 9 nine thirty, because they know in the morning I've got a morning routine where I'm giving to myself I'm filling myself up first and foremost I get into alignment and then I can start the day Break down this morning routine for me I want so, to hear about it yeah it changes every day really I so Maybe just to like wrap up the rest of the story, this will give more of an understanding to why I do the things I do today. So, you know, from that low moment, I started working on myself and doing every single tool you could think of, like from into because I was alone and I wasn't talking to people. I was like, I need to get myself out of this. So, from healing, reading tarot cards, astrology charts, like um, whatever you, you could do to make yourself feel reading better. books. Like I was self development. I threw myself into it. Like my life depended on it because it did. Yeah. I was going to die otherwise. Yeah. So you know, th- some of those low moments, like I would write a note to myself. And just set myself hourly goals so I could get through the day. And it might have been as simple as brush your teeth today or have a meal today. And then as that kind of kept going, it might have been do breath work today or, um, you know, read something on. So that's how deep the reset had to be. Had to be. I had to go back to absolutely bare minimum life skills before I could delve into the personal development. So from delving into that personal development, 
I become so aligned with myself that the people who were meant to be on my path started showing up. And then that's why all of a sudden I made a wellness app by August of that year with Chloe, my business partner, because I was kind of helping her with things. She was helping me with things. And then we were like, we have to get this out to people. And then just because we were in alignment, one thing after another happened. We met with these app people. They were like, this is amazing. We will fund it if we can get a percentage of the app. Built the app for us for free and it ended up being so successful and the thing paid off for everyone. So, you know, just by me doing the work on myself, that's how I found my path. And she was also, Chloe at that time was doing doing a lot of work as well. I imagine she, at that time, because I've had Mitch on the podcast, mm. I imagine Mitch was going through some of his darker times at that at that particular point that's in time right. when that app was coming to fruition. That's right. So I've so I've I've heard what he was going through from the other side of the coin as yeah. well, like in, and some of the deep stuff. So I can only imagine the work that Chloe was doing yeah. when you think of it from her side. And it's all about an undoing. It's, yeah. That's what it is. Like, you know, we're undoing all of these preconceived ideas and patterns and ways of being in our head. And it's about undoing all of that, getting back to our center and then deciding from a, a full place, like, what is it? How do I actually want to show up in the world? Yeah, who like, do I want to be? Who do I want to be? What does my reactions want to be? Is this reaction true to who I really am or is it a programmed response? Like it's just breaking down all of that. And then I just found from doing that that my business flourished. Everything around me flourished because I had done the personal development work. And it all starts with working inside. Exactly. That's people don't get that bit. They miss that bit. Everything, they're, they're in the gym, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're doing this. But if you don't accept who or, or even have a fucking idea who you are as a yeah. start, you've got no fucking hope. That's right. Because it always falls down at some some predetermined time because you've not done the internal work. Exactly. So brings it back to what my morning routine is because I know how important it is for me to show up every day by getting in alignment first. So I have a whole toolbox of things that I do and every morning I can kind of wake up and check in with myself and be like, all right, what do I feel like today? So I might feel a bit flat. So I know when I feel a bit flat, I need to move some energy. So I might like just put on music and dance in the morning. Just to change your state. Change my state. Like just get the feminine flow going, you know, like just. I do that in my bathroom every day. Yeah, it's so (laughs) fun. I love it. And especially for women as well, like just being able to connect with your feminine energy, like that's our power. So we should use that. Lean into it. Lean Lean into into it. it. So it's your creative flow. Like so much comes from that. So, you know, that or it could be like kundalini yoga or it could be, I always visualize. I always set my energy for the day. So you visualize having a successful day from the start of the day. Is that what you say? Kind of. That's I, so energy management is really important to me. So, you know, this is where we get a bit woo woo. (laughs) Go for it. Go for it. I want to go in. Okay. Okay. Yeah, go. So, uh, every, Teach me. Yeah, everyone has like an aura, right? 100% they do. Everyone has an aura. So I work on my aura every day by like checking in with myself. I like picture roots grounding into earth. So I'm grounded into this space, into who I am. And then from there, I kind of like do a scan of my aura. And I can kind of feel into it. I've trained myself enough where I can feel into my aura. And so you're, what you're talking about now is you're talking about your peripherals. You feel yeah, into, you feel I feel it. into like yeah. my surrounding space. And, um, you know, if something feels a bit blocked or, you know, whatever, I'll just like pour white light into it, visualize white light going into it. This is where I get really weird. But... I'm all about no, it. No, no, roll with it. Roll I'm going to roll with it. Roll so, with it. Um, and I also, every morning, so when I've kind of grounded into earth, I get rid of any energy cords that are coming from me or to me from other people. Like I don't want anyone to be plugged into me. I want to be my own sovereign being. Like, is, this what they, is this what they use the crystals for and that kind of stuff? Is that You can of- use crystals for that, but I just, yeah, I just f- – 
like for example, everyone has an energy field, right? Yeah. We might be feeling so good, but then we might go down to Woolworths. And there's a negative bastard. And then all of a sudden we feel like shit or we've got anxiety and but it's not ours. It's not ours. We've picked it up from outside. That's of us. right. So I set my aura and my like guard up essentially at the start of the day so no one else's shit can get into me. So I am in control of how I'm feeling, what I'm doing, like I'm the sovereign being and you and you're being present that's right and i'm not being crowded by anyone else's shit shit shit. right so that's why i kind of ground myself at the start of the day then i visualize white light around me um and i do that every morning so who got you into doing that though because that's because that's quite like you you say that like it's normal and it, <laughs> like like I'm not saying it's not normal but like no it's not normal it, it, it's but this pre- is the, I want to show pe- this is why it's not normal but, but it's sh- key to yeah. my success so yeah. I need to like there's I've been doing this weird shit forever but I need no but to- I wanna no but I I'm not saying it's weird shit what yeah. I'm saying yeah is I'm saying that most people will not know where to start yeah. in terms of going to get that information. If you're gonna, if you're in order, f- the way that you've articulated it sounds easy. But I know from even learning breath work off Ryan and Rue that mm. even there's a there's a lot of moving parts of this stuff that you have to go and learn. Mm. Like, where is the best place for someone to go and even even start? Well to, uh, yeah, obviously, well web. <laughs> but <laughs> this is why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, we, this is honestly why we yeah, did that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. there was an educational portal where people can go and start to learn about all these basic tools that are there for people, but we're not taught at a young age that. Everyone has an aura and if you don't protect that, you take on people's shit. Like yeah. it's it's basic stuff that has been made out to be woo-woo and weird and witchy, but like it's no, it's 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 a hundred percent true because I tell you now, yeah, when I walk into when I walk into a boxing gym or when I walk into any gym or when I walk into a club, I, I, or even in, into a lift, let's just take it as a lift. Mm. If I walk into a lift, I can just feel whether I, these, the people out in this lift and whether I want to, whether they're my people or not. Yeah. I can just tell straight away. Like, because obviously like you just feel the energy coming off them. That's right. Like, and, and, and that is a categoric fact, but the way, but I just, I, like I've listened to you intently talk about this white light and stuff like that, and I'm thinking, "Fuck me, that sounds great." <laughs> I'm like, "But I'm like, I, I don't know, I, I'm so fucked. I don't know where to start." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I know. Okay, you know I, I mean? get that. So that's why I need to remember to make sure I articulate it in a way that people can understand, because I am so far down. Like this, you're, you're so you're so far down the path, and obviously we're going to talk about well web and selling selling bloom and all that stuff. But like, what? Just give me like in terms of so people can so people can become more mindful mm. of who they are, what they're trying to achieve, and kind of feel their energy. What are like what are some little basic principles you can give them? Just like yeah. so they can they can do it today. Today, okay. So bef- this is a good one, and I still do this because it's all so simple. It doesn't have to be profound. So I feel like as soon as you wake up, put your hands on your heart and like take eight. Deep breaths in and out for four counts. Simple as that. By doing that, you're becoming present with your body. And then after you do those eight counts, just lay there and see how you feel. Like check in, actually stop and be like, how does my body feel instead of like getting up and like going about the day and like smashing the day? Like stop and have a present moment with yourself as soon as you wake up because then you kind of know where you're at. You see, you, oh, look, my calf feels sore. Oh, maybe I won't go for a run today then. Exactly. You know instead I mean? of just being like, ah. Like, yeah, and, and, and that's when you get injured and that's when you get, you know. Exactly. But also being like, oh, I feel a little bit anxious today or I feel flat today. And then, you know, say then once you do get up, if someone's like, hey, I want to go and get a coffee with you, you can be like, I'm not really feeling it. And you don't have to be like, oh, okay, I'll go get a coffee. But then you go and have a coffee and you're already feeling shit. And then you have a shitty time with the person. And then you think something's wrong with the person and they think something's wrong with you. But really, you were already feeling shit from the start of the day. It had nothing to do with that interac- interaction. Yeah. And you just, you've just, all you've done is create a, 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 a negative effect and a negative connotation exactly. in two people's lives now for no fucking for reason. For no reason. And so I feel like the best thing you can do as soon as you wake up, 
take deep breaths, really just like get present with your body and, and just check in. Ask yourself how you're feeling. I feel like that is the first step to slowing down the momentum so you can hear what your body needs next or what you need next. Yeah. Because I think some people would just generally wake up and think, oh, "I'm going to smash their work." They could, they could, they could be just, they could get just as much done in the, in the rest of the week and probably more. Besides, if they just took the day off to even just think about mm-hmm. what they're actually trying to fucking achieve because it's so in forced. business, in life, and everything. Because they're just fucking running at it. Yeah. I, I mean, I did earlier. I thought to myself, "Do you know what? I need to go for a fucking walk." Yeah. I took myself off for a walk. And I wrote, I wrote a sales page mm. on my fucking phone while I was walking along, mm. and it fucking, I read it, I just read it before you came, and I was mm. like, "Fuck, that's good." Yeah, <laughs> because you were in a, a clear enough state where you could hear yourself say, "I need to go for a walk." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the key because what you need and what I need are two, two different com- things. So, so two different. different but and and that's why if you get up and you've got you've turned on the news and you have people that are telling you do this, do that, like. And this is life. Like all through our life, they've been like, you can't eat this. You can't eat that. That's bad for you. And you're just like, oh, okay. And you've taken it for word. Wear a mask. What? <laughs> don't know. <laughs> anyway. Um, but, you know, you've taken it for word. Whereas yeah. if you stop in and start being present with yourself and have self-awareness with yourself, then you know for your system – What's like if, calibrated. That's right. So if you're like, you know, I want to go for a coffee, you can sit with yourself and be like, do I really want to go for a coffee? Like, how am I feeling? Um, and then being okay with saying no. But when you're saying no to someone else, you're actually saying yes to yourself and it's better for everyone. Yeah, it's, it's better because at the end of the day, if you choose not to go for a coffee with that person, mm. you're giving them a better experience because they'd only had a shit experience exactly. with you anyway because you didn't want to be there. Mm. But And, and this, this, is, this is where like um, – like, Eastern European people are so good because that when you say to an Eastern European person, "Do you want to go to play football?" They'll mm. go, "No." <laughs> and, 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 they're I love so, it. and they're so clinical. I love it. And they don't. They're, they're unapologetical about it. You say to a British person, "Do you want to mm. go play football?" They'll want to say no, but they'll be like, "Oh well, I've got to do this and I've got to do that." that. And that feels and, and, shit in my body when someone yeah. talks like that. Yeah, I boundaries have been a really big thing for me, and being able to say no and just owning it. And I love when my friends can have clear boundaries with me because you just know where you stand. Yes. Like there's no bullshit. Yes. You can just say, look. if I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it today. Like let's, let's reconvene on fucking Wednesday. And it doesn't I mean? mean I hate you. It doesn't mean I don't love you any How less. How could you fucking hate me? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you know, it's just, it's just clear. Like yeah. it's so clear communication, clear boundaries, like – just actually honouring what it is your body wants to do. But is here's, here's the thing. Society has mm. taught people inherently through TV mm. that they are to take offence yep. to clear communication. Mm. And that's why the news can manipulate you the way the news manipulates you. Mm. Because it's all like, oh, today you need a mask. Today you don't need a mask. Yeah. Today you need a mask. Today you need to isolate. Today mm. you don't need to isolate. Mm. Today we've got a problem. Today mm. we've got Ebola. Today Ebola doesn't exist. Mm. Because... you. You know what I mean? You're teaching all that within mm. within this within this narrative, and that's why I, I'm you know I've not turned the fucking TV on for about seven eight years. Either have I. I don't even know what's going on, and I know that's you don't need to because someone's going to tell you anyway. Exactly. <laughs> so so you don't need to watch yeah. this shit. No, you don't. Like I'm telling you now, the most powerful thing that you can do in your fucking life mm. is turn the TV off. hundred percent. I'm not I'm not saying don't watch Netflix or don't watch a series. No, of course. But I'm saying do not watch the fucking news. That's right. It's the worst. It's the, it's the most. Un- There's no business people watching the fucking news. No, they don't give a fuck. It's manipulative. It's um. But that's just like the tip of the iceberg of a narrative they want to push. Like if we want to go into this rabbit hole, we probably don't. But like even the way relationships are meant to be, even the way this is why I thought. This is why I thought. This is exactly what I thought that I thought, I thought of that exact narrative when you saw, when you told me that you'd been married though. Mm. I thought. You'd done that because that was that was something that would pl- apply to the seed in you when you were a child. It's like, oh, I, I married yeah. the childhood sweetheart. That's right. 
That's yeah. what I was trying to communicate 100%. earlier. Hundred percent. My mum and dad are childhood sweethearts. So, you, so yeah. So you think, fuck, I've seen it while while I'm growing up. That's so right. now I need it in my life too. It, that was the way I went, and that's why, even though it was the worst thing in the world, it was the biggest blessing in the world because then I got to knock down every single structure and narrative in my life and really look at it and be like, does this serve me? And I question everything now. Like, you know, even eating lunch at a certain time. Like I'm, I'm like, what, who made the rule that you have to have lunch at that time? Like I do everything. You question it. Yeah. I question everything. Like nothing, like even, yeah, relationships is a big one. Um, like I don't want my life to look the same as everybody else's. I don't want it to be, I don't want to be the same as everyone else. I want to create a new narrative and lead the way and be with conviction so people feel free enough in themselves to be themselves and how they want to be as well. And if I have to lead the way to do that, I'll do it. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I just I, do, I just think everyone should just be at peace with uh, with being different anyway. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like it's not it's not it's not fucking rocket science, is it? If you if you if you're a girl who loves to fucking who wants to go and be an IFBB fucking pro, lean go into do it. it. Go do it. Mm-hmm. More power to you. But don't judge Don't judge the girl who wants to sit there and fucking go to fucking Dinky Donuts either. Exactly. Because like, it's not your business to no, judge. just let people be happy and do what they want to the, do. People will do what they want to do for their own for their own selves and, and to fill their own cup up. And you, mm-hmm. uh, we aren't ones to judge each other for that. That's you know right. What I mean? but, but too many times we've all been guilty of it. Of course. We've all been guilty of that. Because it's part of the world we grew up in. It's a, it's a pattern and it's a program that we have to um, rewire. It's it's who we are as humans. I know. And there's so, there's so many patterns when you think of it like... So many. When you, like every, every part of the system, you know, go to school, get a job, buy a house, get it married. It kills me. It makes me, want, it just, it makes it me just, feel physically ill. It's just fucking so soul-destroying. But... There are some people out there who are okay with that, and that is also fine. There's no, there's no judgment if that's what you want. Ex- it truly want. Truly want. Exactly right. Truly want. Mm. But I'm saying, how the fuck do you know you truly want it when it's been brought up into your narrative your whole life? This is. This is. Th- do you know what this is? This is. I thought I wanted the Stepford wife. You life. were the Stepford wife, it, right? <laughs> I, I thought I wanted that, and yeah. I was complacent and yeah. happy with that because I had learnt to numb myself enough that I stopped listening to my body and what I truly wanted, which is basically what people do when they think they want the normal life as well. But if everybody actually took 15 minutes of a morning to – Check in with themselves. And ask themselves, do do I want to be like that? And it doesn't, you can't, it's not like going to happen overnight. This is a process of, like I've had a morning routine for four years. Like this is something that I've worked on. And it didn't just start in the way that you've portrayed today. It no. started, you start, I remember this, this whole conversation started with you saying, I'll brush my teeth, I'll do it here, I'll do this mm. there, I'll do this there. It's mm-hmm. not like you've gone, okay, I'm going to just lean into my circle of light and I'm going to pull this and put this white light <laughs> here and I'm going to do this and then I'm going to be a wizard. Like, do you know, oh, do you, I love wizards. You, <laughs> I am a wizard. Do you, do you know what I'm saying though? Like, yeah. It's like, let's, let's, let's not, everything is compounded at 1% daily. Mm-hmm. It's like you don't just start a podcast day one and start start having on like the, right. like the, 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 you know, the Joe Rogans of the world. You just mm-hmm. don't, it just doesn't happen. No. Like everything's built on, yeah. but you build things on, you, it's building blocks, building blocks, building That's blocks, right. building blocks. So bringing back that back to you waking up and being like, do I actually want this? It's It takes a little bit to work out what it is you actually want and who you actually are. But the more time you spend in silence yes. and actually being present with yourself, yeah. you are more likely to find it than not. A hundred percent. And and I that's I want people to know like how much better and how much full their lives can be. Like yeah. everybody settles and we don't have to. Like no. we're allowed to be happy. But we're also in this society where it's like, oh, you can't be happy. Like, there's so much going on in the world. I'm like, yeah, I, where will I be happy? Be be happy with what you actually have, mm. and be pr- and be and be proud, and, and and give yourself the respect for what you've done. Mm. But also, be com- be completely aware that you can strive for more, 100%. and there is not a fucking issue with that. Mm-hmm. There is not a fucking issue with that. Here's the problem with, with what you said that a lot of people get wrong, in my opinion, right? Mm. Being sitting 
not a lot a lot of people spend time on their own and they've got that thing they've their society's learning to spend time alone the problem is this they fill it full of noise social media they fill it full of youtube videos fill it full of netflix I'm, it's really fucking hard mm. to actually sit there on your own in silence yeah. and just be. That is really fucking hard. <laughs> but I tell you what, as soon as you learn to do that, that's that's what gives you a lot of clarity around a lot right. of stuff. I'll spend I'll spend an hour sat there on my own, just in fucking silence, no social, no nothing. Mm. Now I couldn't even do fucking two minutes mm. on my own with myself, mm. like even probably about twelve months ago, yeah. because it was that difficult. I could sit there for an hour, just literally just sit there and just and just think mm. because humans don't give themselves enough time to think mm. how can you execute on all the good shit that you could do in your life if you not even thought about mm. is there a better way of doing that mm. is there a fucking better way of doing that mm. could i make that dramatically quicker to get to that point if i just sat there and thought a moment about it yeah so many people just fucking executing on shit mm. making it so long-winded but it's also that's the world we live in too it's so noisy like that's what the elites or whoever like they're filling us with so much noise and so much like so we don't have time to think because pe- they don't want us to think yeah, yeah, yeah. They want uh, they if we all started acting like this. Imagine how powerful we're all going to be. Then they start losing control of us. They want the sheep who are just happy and complacent. And I love this little inner conspiracy theorist coming out. Oh, <laughs> I know. She's here. I She's here. <laughs> she might look like Emma Bunton, but I tell you what, <laughs> this little bit of spice has gone right into <laughs> my podcast. Gets shut down. <laughs> yeah, I know. Let's not do a Pete Evans on ourselves, but that's yeah. Oh, Pete Evans. Oh. Uh, uh, no, we're not going there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but that's 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 yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> let's let's pivot on to like. Cool. So, you've obviously you obviously built Bloom. Give it, give people a bit of an understanding of of what you built. Obviously, you started Bloom. You you built Bloom with um, Chloe, and then you obviously got these app designers involved. They yep. took a, they took a piece. They took a cut. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can discuss percentages. You might be able to. You no, there's a lot I can't really discuss at the moment, just due G- to the due sale. To, due, being to, due to so the sale of it, can you discuss how many members it had before it was sold? No. Right. Okay. Cool. We will forget that. The question yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ha- yeah. Just um, maybe in twelve months' time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. That's another podcast. But yeah. But like anyway, you 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 obviously exited that. I know we can't talk about the price you exited for, but obviously you got a nice chunk, nice chunk from that, and then you went on and formed. Well, web. Yeah. Talk to talk to me about, you know, how. Talk to me firstly. Yeah. Talk to me about how you felt the day that you sold Bloom. Mm. So, the reason why we wanted to sell our share of Bloom is because, so Chloe and I were very um, visual. And in meditations, like we are both so strongly aware of what our purpose is here on earth. We know we're kind of just the vessel and we have to execute it in a way. So we're getting into the tech and mindfulness space to hopefully raise the consciousness of the world. And I love that. I fucking love that. Yeah. That is a, that is a good purpose. Yeah. That's what we're doing it for. There's no other reason. Raise the consciousness of the world. Yeah. I resonate with that. Yeah. That hits. Good. So, Bloom, we could do that and it was wonderful. But because there was a third party involved, we became across a few roadblocks that we couldn't um, execute our vision to the fullest that we wanted to. So, you were hand, you were basically handcuffed. Yeah, to- still doing a wonderful job, but we wanted to do – we knew what – It wasn't living your full light, basically. Yeah, we knew how much more we needed to go – go further so that's when we started thinking about well web why we still had bloom and we were kind of doing the two at the same time because um bloom is an app and then well web at the moment is just um a website but eventually it will turn into an app um and it was two kind of separate things like we had a meditation and sleep app and then well web is a video streaming service kind of like netflix but for wellness yeah yeah um and So, yeah, it was a video streaming service. So, it was two separate things. However, as kind of, you know, time went on, we realized that we really needed to be all in on WellWeb. So, that's when we got out of Bloom. And the day we sold, it was kind of sad. Um, Like, it was bittersweet. Like, we were happy, but it was 
like that's our baby like that came from our brain like every single part of that app was a decision that you had made it's an extension of us like it was a creation that was birthed through us like nobody else did that except chloe and i yes the development team executed it but the ideas were all us and we're so proud of that and um so it was kind of sad, like our first little baby that we're getting, letting go of, but sometimes you have to take one step back to take two steps forward. Yeah. And we just knew what our mission was and how big our purpose was and where we wanted to go. And yeah, now we're all in with WellWeb and, you know, this is just the beginning where we're going. Like, you had an amazing launch of WellWeb. Yeah. Because I saw you had all the all the influencer girls there. Mm. Everyone was there. You were all doing yoga. And it was awesome. T- talk, talk us through putting an event like that together as well. Yeah. So I did a lot of that at Bondi Sands too, hence why Bondi Sands was so great. I wore many hats. Um, our network between Chloe and I, we could pull influencers to a space purely just because they were our friends or, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Chloe's friends. Yeah. And um, the event itself, we wanted it to be something that really touched people. We wanted these influencers, people of influence, to have such a profound experience that it was going to shift their consciousness level and then in turn hopefully trickle through to their followers and make a ripple effect. Like, yeah. you know. Something something powerful that actually, rather than just getting the influencer there and giving them something shiny object, yeah. that, another shiny object that they can post on their story. Yeah. You're saying, I want to change the way this person feels about feels themselves. Feels thinks. That's and right. And thinks. And then, and then, and then, and then as a byproduct, they will, they will change the way that they, they approach the world and then they'll mm. change the vibes they're giving off and they'll change what the audience Exactly. Sees. Yes, money is a bonus and it allows us to do more with what we want to do and to push boundaries and be more innovative and all of that. But our true core is to help people remember who they truly are because that's what's going to shift the energetic frequency of the world. Like that that's how deep it goes for us. It's not like, yeah, I have to be a businesswoman and, you know, all of this, make decisions, be a boss lady, all of that. But it's so much bigger than me and Chloe that it's naturally like if I get in alignment at the start of the day I meet the right people who are going to get well webbed to where it's going to go like yeah, 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 I, yeah. I am it's like a magnet like because I'm yeah. on my path yeah it's kind of like how me and you met exactly like, do you know what I mean like, yeah. like I just, I, just I, I, was, I, was, I was telling Molly like I was just literally I was, I was sat here in my lounge and I was thinking to myself you know I, I was manifesting like getting more and more powerful women on the podcast and then mm. Isabel Grace come on the podcast and then someone else and someone else and I was like and, and then and then I'll go out for a walk and I see Mitchell and we talk and then we talk and then you pop up and I'm like oh, sweet, another podcast guest do you know what I mean like it's just I know like, I just, just got like, off my back I'm like hello I just like, talked to everyone <laughs> I talked to everyone you put your hand down I'm going straight in for the hug I'm like, yeah, I'm like hey. <laughs> I know it's just, it's just it just energetically it's how the world it's how the world exactly. works so when you when you're when you when 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 you want something and when something's right it will mm. it will work for you yeah. and when things aren't working for you and when things are a little bit hard it if you just sit back and actually just think to yourself okay let's have a look at this mm. objectively you can see maybe i shouldn't be leaning that that's way right. or maybe i shouldn't be with that girl or maybe i shouldn't be with that partner mm-hmm. maybe that's not right for me right now mm. maybe that'll come back around mm. but at the moment mm. and where i'm going and what i'm doing that's not that's it's not, not vibe that's not vibing me that's mm-hmm. not vibing me it's not like and me you up. only know that if you take a moment to assess which uh, is yeah. why like the morning routine thing the first thing you should do is check in with yourself and be like yeah. where am i at yeah like put yourself first because then you put on the path with the right people and the right moments and yeah business opportunities and whatever and that is what has happened with Chloe and I. So how how big a part of your life and and your development has Chloe been? Uh in my development? Yeah. I I all my development has been me. Yeah, it's all been me, but what I believe has happened now is I am surrounded by guides or friends who can keep me on my path. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sur- my people who are around me now are my people. Yeah, yeah, you energetically you've just pulled them in. They're my people. Like they know me, they know who I am. They know me to my core. And when you did your reinvention, mm. did you notice that you had to lose a lot of people out of your life? Yeah. Yeah. And but 
it didn't bother me when your whole world gets turned upside down like it, you just kind of fearless in a way because I had nothing to grab onto. I didn't have a house. I had like I lived in air. I've basically lived in Airbnb since I left with an overnight bag at that house. The house I well, lived even in. Even still now. Yeah, I've never. I just I love being free. <laughs> yeah, no, like no. now I don't want to be locked in anywhere. Like I'm just like month by month. Let's see where I'm at. And you just and you, so you literally rent in an Airbnb month to month. Yeah. Fuck, I love that, man. I love that. Because <laughs> then I have two bags of stuff. Because yeah. when I left my house, yeah. I left everything. All my furniture and everything is still there. And I was just like, yeah, I left with an overnight bag. I have two suitcases. So if I had to go somewhere tomorrow, I can. I don't I even yeah. sold my car. I get Ubers everywhere. Like I want to sell mine. I don't need it. Like, And it's fun. And I actually love being in Ubers because I can, can work. work. And, yes. and so it, I'm working smarter, not harder. I can be at home, enjoy yes. my Molly time. I can work in Ubers, get my emails and admin bullshit out of the way, and then it's done. Yeah, I love that because I've wanted to sell my car for ages, but it's like some kind of like little tie to it. Mm. I think it's because I've got the number plate podcast. No. Oh, that's <laughs> cool though. I want, I want, I'm like, I fucking, because I bought the number plate, I put the number plate on the car. I'm like, just nah. put the podcast thing here. Yeah, no, I know. It's, 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 it's an ego. It's an ego. It's an ego thing, isn't it? Like, <laughs> that's okay. We're allowed I mean? to have egos. Like, we all have egos. 100%. Like, as long as it's managed in the right light, you're fine. you got, you got to have one. But this is where learning to love all of yourself, the dark, the light, all of it. Like we're not all just Fuck. P- perfect, you know. You have to enjoy the part of you that loves my Prada bag, or you know the <laughs> show the camera that because <laughs> it looks like um Big it, Bird. Yeah, yeah, Big Bird off um off Sesame Street. It does. I, when you walked in, I'm like, that, no way. It's no. it's cool though. You're so extra. But this You're is so the extra. thing. Like, you know, yes, I'm spiritual, and yes, I'm. But spiritual beings love Prada. But I can I can love whatever I want to love. Like yeah, and I love all of that part of me that loves all of that. Like I love spicy margaritas. I love tuning out to um Housewives of Beverly Hills. Like, you know, but yeah, I yeah. also You love the Frankie Lee podcast. I love the Frankie Lee podcast, but I can also <laughs> like talk I'm to clipping aliens. That. I'm clipping yeah, that. I love the Frankie Lee podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I just look dead in the camera. I, I love that. That was so spicy as well, man. Do yeah. that again. No, I'm joking. Uh, yeah. I don't, no, I'm joking. We, can do, we can do promos for take, social take, after take, this. Take, take, take 75. <laughs> Live on air. No, but no, I, I resonate with that because I think you've, you've, like you said, unapologetic, unapologetically self if you want a if you want a Prada bag, have the Prada bag. You don't need to apologise for that. No. You know, you rock it out, rock it out. But I just think it's such a a great journey you've been on. Like obviously social media manager to app owner, exiting and selling an app, and like all this by the age of thirty four. Yeah. Do you, know, do you know what I'm saying? So what what is the the future Molly doing? Like what what is she? What where where is she? Where is she where is she going to be by forty? I don't really know because I don't really know what I'm doing like tomorrow. Um, but I know how I want to feel. How do you want to feel? I want to continue to feel like this, but fuller again, knowing that I actually am creating a ripple effect on earth. Yeah. Yeah. I, when I was younger, I always used to say that I wanted to be famous when I grew up and I don't want to be famous but what I meant the vibrations of the words that I meant when I said that as a kid but I didn't have the vocabulary to explain it I wanted to be big enough that I had an influence that really could create some sort of an influence that's what I mean some some form of impact positively on other people beyond yourself that's right so that's what I will continue to do however that looks like if I I want to still talk to people I want to fly around the world I've from a business point of view with well web like we're setting we've just changed production companies here and the content and over the next three months where we're going with well web is going to be unbelievable I'm I've, so excited. I've seen the production of some of the content you're doing now it looks fucking fantastic yeah it's things are going from zero to a hundred and I'm so excited and just 
you know, some things that have been put in place for over the next three months, well, Web's going to go from here to here and I'm really excited. So once we get that right, I want to replicate that in different countries. So have like a team in USA, have a team in UK um, so we can have like content, te- like, you know, how content like- teams in those areas specifically targeted for those demographics. Exactly. So you know how Netflix has like a Netflix originals and they yeah, have a pro- yeah, yeah. a production. So we would want to have a well web originals. Yeah. Essentially like with the lack of a better word, but um you know and we shoot content. We fly all over the world and shoot content and I just want to have all those teams set up and um I want to continue my personal growth journey. Like I'm learning so much about myself. Like I can, you know, I'm like really connected to spirit I get messages and things like that so I want to explore that more I want to talk on big stages I want to inspire people I just want to keep being and I also want to have fun yeah you gotta have fun while you do it there's oh, no point there's, there's no, no point, point doing it otherwise yeah that's what that's what I was saying you glow you the reason you're glowing and the reason you're lighting it up and the reason you just you you, you talk in such a um a, com- a convictional point of view is like it's like you know who you are as a woman mm-hmm. and do you, and one thing I want to ask you is, do you find that intimidates like yes other women and other men? Yes. Um, not at the moment because I'm attracting none of that now. Yeah. There was a period that it did. Yeah. Um, but it shifted. It's like I went yeah. through that and yeah. I, it was like, okay, what do I, you know, am I've, I... I've been through it too, trust me. Yeah. Trust me, because you, when you're abrasive and you and you say what you think and when yeah. you're out there mm. and you're in people's faces... But that was just an, uh, an opportunity for me to be like, are you really okay, like, okay with being... Do you really love yourself like this? Yeah. So now I, I do, so... I don't have to worry about that. I yeah. don't. Yeah. Um, and I know it's... I know I'm always coming from a place of integrity. I never want to hurt anyone. I'm not a malicious person. So everything I do, I know I'm just doing it out of love. So it's, I don't, anyone else's opinions don't bother me anymore. Um, For men, yeah, for a while, like, you know, just a a woman who has money who doesn't need anyone, like I really don't. And I'm so capable, like, but that was a good practice for me as well because I was, I guess, so in my masculine that I still wanted to be able to go into my feminine and it's all, I just love life because there's yeah. so many opportunities to grow and learn and um, yeah, but where I'm at now, I'm not really attracting people who are intimidated by me. Yeah, you just you just attract the people that are, are on the path that that love what you're doing mm. and kind of bringing you the right energy at the right time to make it bang That's for right. you, whatever whatever it is at that particular point. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. Mm. Do you think though that that you will um, be a free spirit for a, for a good amount of time? I can see you as kind of like a free spirit because you've got so much stuff that you got to tick off. I can just tell. Mm. I can just tell you're you're a, you're a free bird for the next few years. You got your America. You got the UK. Mm. Like. Actually, before we go down that route, mm. run me through. Like, there's a lot of people that listen to this podcast. There'll be women listening, there'll be men listening that want to set something up online. Mm. And and obviously, this. How do you even go? How can people even even go about setting up this like little portal for themselves and putting their own knowledge into a portal so they can get it out to the world? There's a lot of people with a lot of knowledge that they could put into a course or put into something mm. that they could put out into the world. Mm. Don't even know how to don't even know how to execute on it. Yeah. It's about talking to people and learning and, you know, you can learn anything on YouTube now. So I'm not saying like you can just learn how to make a website or whatever on YouTube, but just getting as much information is power. So if you can kind of just like get as much information on whatever it is, the topic that you want to do or what whatever area you want to, to go in, like just – soak up as much knowledge and information as you can so you know the right people to go and ask for help for. Yeah. You know, it's um you don't have to do everything on your own. I delegate the fuck out of everything. 100% you do. And it's cuz I can't do it all. Like I don't want to do it all. I don't want to do it all. I don't like I need people around me who are going to have structures and stuff in place cuz I'm so like the ideas lady. But th- but this is what I explain to people Molly. It's like there's a 
just because you've got the concept of the graphic design mm. doesn't mean you have to do the graphic design. No. You should you should give it to someone whose power yeah. is graphic design. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So 100%. they can so they can lean into their power to do the graphic design. Yeah. That's why like you know, I I'm not saying that you do it because mm. you've got you've got people in house that do it, but like people can just go on Fiverr, go on freelance or go on other Without go, a doubt. And go and get it done. hundred like, percent. And get it done nine times like everyone's everyone's like, Oh, I'll get Canva. No, fuck Canva. Mm-hmm. Like because you, yeah, you can get Canva and do it. Canva's great, mm. but like you don't want to be doing it. No. You wanna you wanna give that to someone who's a pro on Canva to do exactly, it. Exactly, because then it gives you better quality product and you go from there. Like, you know, I um there was a moment in time when I would speak in businesses about social media, like just to yeah, help, yeah. you know, and I hated doing PowerPoint presentations, hated it. Could sit up there and talk for days. Who, whoever invented PowerPoint presentations, <laughs> I reckon we create a petition <laughs> to shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm telling you now, PowerPoint presentations have ruined my fucking life. I've been, I was kicked out of so many classes at school for PowerPoint presentations. They're a fucking joke, isn't exactly they? Exactly, right? So I would get on Airtasker and pay someone $25 to write my PowerPoint, PowerPoint yeah. presentation. I'd just give dot points of what I wanted to talk about. They would do it and then I'd get into like companies and I'd be like... Ah. Fucking hell. You know, work smarter, not harder. But if you... Yeah, like... Knowledge is, yeah, getting into all, like knowing what you need to ask for and then going and finding the people who can execute if you can't do it. Like, I think that's just the best way to go about it. 100%. 100%. You got to outsource absolutely everything you can. Exactly. Don't, don't, don't sit there, don't sit there doing it and don't be, un, don't be apologetic, apologetic about doing it either. Mm. Like, mm. because, because when, when, young men or women or anyone looks at you and says, oh, she's a successful woman, she's making millions, she's done this, she's done that. It's like, yeah, the reason why mm. is because you've got other people on the boat mm-hmm. to go to the direction you're going. It's yeah. not because you've done it all your fucking self. Exactly. And this it comes back down to self-awareness as well because I know myself so well, I'm okay with the parts that I'm not good at mm. and I'm okay with the parts that I am good at. So I focus on the things that I am good at and I put people around me who are uh, like uh, the places where I need a little bit more lifting and I put those people around me so it creates like the most wonderful team ever. I love it. And not having an ego that you can't do something either. A lot of people think they have to do everything on their own. Yes. And like get rid of that because nobody can. You, c- you can't do it on your own and you don't and you shouldn't even want to. Yeah. Because it's fucking boring. It's so crap. It's so boring. That's and what- also it makes you, it pulls you out of your power. If you're doing something that you hate you're not going to be better. It's, it's going to be filled with shitty vibrations anyway. This, like, is, this is why on this, I do the I, I do the talking shit. Yeah. I do the thing I like. Yeah. And I'll book the guests because I, I like booking them by all the voice notes and stuff. Mm. That's cool. I'll do that. <laughs> I'm not going to fucking edit the videos. No. I ain't going to build the website. <laughs> I, I ain't going to do that. No. Because, because, because that's... <laughs> Like, I am fucking Baldini. No. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Exactly like, right. Fuck that. Yeah. I ain't doing it. No. Like, it's, it's, it's done. So, the moral of the story, delegate. Delegate. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's the way forward. But, like, people need to know that. People yeah. need to know that. Because everyone's thinking, thinking you get to multi-million dollars on your own. It's not... Not true. It's not, it's not a true statement. It's, mm. it's something... It's a, it's a fucking myth. It's, yeah. It's a fucking myth. And... I want to. I want you to break down WellWeb and how it's structured inside, so that people get this enlightenment within themselves. Mm-hmm. So um, it's always going to shift and evolve, but where it's at, I guess, right now, is we have broken it down into different categories. Yeah. So there's like a movement car- category where we will have classes you can do like bar yoga. Um, you know, breath work, meditation, like actual yep. practical things that you can do. Um, even like... A, a and all f- this can be done at home, right? All of it do- is done at home. Yeah, and gym stuff as well. Well, not gym, but like body weight stuff. Like yep. that's the movement category. But then we have like an education category and we will just touch on different topics like, you know, energy management or um, sustainable living or like everything's under there, like tantra, like anything you can think of, it's there. And... 
it's just a little video, like how to read tarot cards. You just lit up like 17,000 girls' lives with Tantra. Like, <laughs> like, they're, they're like, oh, I'm signing up. <laughs> but it's not, it's, Tantra isn't what you think it is. Like no. Tantra is a practice. Like we're not getting into Tantra now. <laughs> <laughs> you went into it. No, but it's, that's yeah. what I mean. If you yeah. were to learn about it, like it's. it's there's more to it than, it's, it's, there's more to it than, than the sexual element is what It's not just sex. It's a, it's a it's way about, of it's being. The, it's, the, it's the energy. Exactly it's the energy. right. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. and I think, these are all such powerful tools that if people can learn and like delve into so yeah there's an educational section um then we've got like there's cooking there's yeah spirituality there's self-love like there's so many different categories broken down and you can kind of get in and just start exploring and instead of watching netflix like just dive into this educational portal and just there might be one video that resonates and lights something up for you and then you're on your way yeah, and and you you're basically saying just find out what lights you up in that, and then just follow that path of that route inside the portal. Yeah, that's exactly right. How did you align yourself with the coaches and the, and the people that yep. that are on this journey now? Because obviously, like you met R- Ryan Rue, and yeah. I've heard there's a bit of an interesting story about how you met yeah, them. Yeah, like, yeah, it's alignment, and then I it's it's me getting into alignment, and then the right people just show up on the path. It's as simple as that. That's how I work. Um, and the people who are on there are, you know, people that Chloe and I have had personal relationships with, or even part of our team, they had personal relationships with. Everyone is aligned with the message. They can see the bigger picture and, you know, where we want to go with it. Everything's aligned. It's all just, it sounds so annoying. Like I wish there was more to it, but it's not like, it's just. But it all come, it, but, but it's all right saying aligned. It's it, it, the first thing, we, it, like we said about getting alignment is the fact of being comfortable with who you are and giving yourself a little bit of silence to be able to, to listen in and, and feel who yeah. you are as a person and a human. Mm. Like, I know it sounds a bit woo woo, like you said, and I, I get it. I, I, I even probably even 16 months ago, I probably wouldn't have said the same things that I'm saying right now, but yeah. like just being present and being on your own and, and leaning into it. You've seen how much of an impact it's had in like Mitchell's life. It's yeah. had a massive impact in my personal life. Yeah. And you're, you're in, you've, you're doing exceptionally well with, mm. with this. So it can't be bollocks, can it? It, can't, no. it must be some truth to it. That's right. So, I feel like more people are opening up to this though. Like, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I feel like, Yes, we're still kind of like, oh, it's woo woo. But the more people you talk to about it, like it, people are starting to resonate more. And I feel like so many people have like this deep feeling in their gut that something isn't quite right, or they're not living their true purpose, or you know, everyone feels that. I think a lot, lot more people have felt it since with all these lockdowns, everything's going on in mm-hmm. the world. A lot of people have had to spend a lot of time at home. So it's happening for us, not to us. Exactly right. You can you can lean into it however you wish. You can lean yeah. into the negative or lean into the positive That's of right. everything that you're facing. And I get it. It's scary when you start looking at your life. And if you start looking around and you're like, wow, like none of this resonates. And how am I meant to get out of this when I've been married for 10 years or if, you know, I have a kid and I'm not happy here. I get that scary. But yeah. you would be doing earth and everybody else around you more service if you were more aligned with who you truly are yeah no no i agree with you because like just just you you walking around unhappy doesn't help anybody Mm -mm. think about how much negative energy you're putting out into the world and how many other people pick up on that yeah and how many lives that affects because like you affect like five but you go Woolworths and you fucking Mm-hmm. walking around traipsing around looking like a negative bastard mm. you've just affected like five people in the shop who go home and then put it onto their kids exactly and put it on. and it's unless just, they're me and set their energy at the start of the day <laughs> but 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 the thing is you know that 99 percent of the people in the world i mean i don't even know how to set my energy at the start of the day i just yeah. wake up and i'm like let's go <laughs> you, know, you know what i mean I'm, yeah like, well that's cool but that could work for you yeah wh- wh- whatever I, I just i just know i just know as soon as i'm i like wake up have my breakfast Boom, boom, boom. Have a shower. Mm. Get a little bit spicy. Shave my head. <laughs> as soon as I've shaved my head, it's yeah. on like Donkey Kong. I'm telling you. 
I'm telling you, as soon as I've leaned into this baldness a little bit, I'm like, yeah, I've moisturised. As soon as I'm moisturised and, I, and I, I'm on the drive to that gym, I've got a little bit of Will Sparks going. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah so I, get, I, get to, I get to the front door of Never Quit. Yeah. In Bundle. Yeah. Gold Coast. Great gym. I've Go check there. it out. I've been there. Yeah, you have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as soon as I get there, I'm like, right, it's on now. Yeah. It's fucking on. And Good. that's me. So that's how I start the day. And that's awesome. And you found what works for you. Um, yeah, but people just got to find that for them. Exactly. And, that's, and there's nothing wrong with that. 100%. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I, 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 I love that. I love that for the world that you've been able to drop that here today. Mm. But like, if there was some pearls of wisdom, like if you've got to depart the planet here, you've got to go, Moles. You can't, you can't, you can't leave any of this world we're behind. All this other stuff has, has mm-hmm. gone right. Mm-hmm. But you've just got to leave some massively impactful fucking statements, some words, some wisdom that would just change thousands of lives beyond all recognition. Mm. What would they be? Yeah. I've got a lot of words. I know you have. This is why this segment's going to be 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I was to leave Earth, this is my last time here on Earth, by the way, which is super exciting because <laughs> I don't want to come back. <laughs> this is my last life. Um, oh, my God. I can't believe you started like this, but carry on. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. So really, I'm just announcing that yeah. this is my last time on Earth. No, it is. I'm All so right. excited about that. And um, But that's okay. I'll be an angel or something in another life after that. So Why don't just be an angel in this life? Well, I am, but like I just mean like a <laughs> literal angel. Like, fly, anyways, whatever. Yeah. So um, I would give people something tangible that they can do, which is – do something for yourself 15 minutes every morning before you start your day. I, I think that's vital, vital, you know, wh- and wh- whatever you want to do in that 15 minutes, like I, w- I would just beg people, please set 15 minutes aside every single day for you. Whatever you want to do in that time, whether it's just sitting on the wall with your legs up, whether it's journaling, <laughs> whether it's like whatever, yeah. like just journaling, whether it's breathing, whether it's yeah. meditating, whether it's yoga, whether it's dancing, whatever, just Express start yourself. taking 15 minutes. Like it's just your time. That's what I would want people to do. That's honestly what I'd want people to do because I know the effects of what would happen by doing that. Like – if someone committed to doing that just for two months or one month, like they would start showing up better in the world. And all I want is for people to start showing up better in the world as their best selves, as their true selves, you know, be with conviction, be happier. And I know that starting with a 15 minute portal every single day for yourself is going to get you on that road to do that. I love that. I love that. And, and, and also I want to talk about, not only the, the impact that that'll have on people, but like, just, I can't, I cannot stress enough in this podcast, or in relation to everything that you've said, how fucking important it is to spend time in silence with yourself as well. Mm-hmm. Like, in terms of like, you're saying spend 15 minutes, I'm saying, fuck me, spend a lot longer. Like, yeah. if, you, if you can. If you can. If well, you, you can, want to. After doing 15 minutes for two months. You will. You just, like, you I will. spend half the day just like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you just just do it because I'm telling now people like if you can do it. Yeah. It's so powerful, man. So it's powerful. So powerful. And you will just you will shift not only your mind, your business, your relationships with people. Yep. You you just I can't even describe to you like how, yeah. like it, it does it does impact you so massively. That's right. And it's it's, it's it's a, a ripple effect that can't even be put into words. Yeah, and I, and I and I fundamentally agree with that. Can you drop um, where people can sign up to WellWeb and all that stuff? I hate doing this. I yeah. hate self promotion. Like, yeah, I, I, it makes me I, feel I, awkward. I, I hate self promotion. <laughs> can't you do can, it? We got Molly Cam. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, you can find me. My Instagram handle is Molly Jane, just straight up, and you can find WellWeb at WellWeb. Just straight up and wellweb.com. Yeah, I love that. And thank you so much for your time thank today. You. Yeah. I know we haven't, I, di- I didn't want to do the podcast that broke down the revenue numbers and, and all the other stuff because, like, people, p- people, you should know this app and, the, and this web portal. I've done great numbers. She, this woman is doing great business. We don't need to go into that today. I, I didn't. I can tell it. you how many downloads Bloom had. If, go on then. Like on downloads, then. not subscriptions. It then. was over one hundred and fifty thousand. 
there you go. That 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 just tells you that this woman not only knows who she is on her own level, but is also well well above it in business to drop this information to you. So 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 she says. Be silent for 15 minutes a day and sit with yourself. Yeah. I suggest whether you're a man, woman or dog that you listen to this woman, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm only saying it for... For you. That's right. And, yeah. and this is what I say, you know, people will be like, oh, I love your energy or whatever. And I'm, I'm like, whatever you can see in me, it's just a reflection of what is in you anyway. You know, I am just... I've got rid of all the barriers and I've broken all the barriers and I know who I am now and I am just a mirror to everyone of being like you can be your true self as well so 100 percent, yeah like 100 percent. and and do you know what right like i thought about when, when you when you came in i thought about how many different ways that we could do this podcast and i you know i've had a lot of business people on the podcast and we've driven into revenue numbers and all this that stuff stuff with this and with wellness i just and there's been a few podcasts now back to back to back that are going along this wellness path and the reason I've done it like this and the reason I put it together like this and the reason I think it's aligned like this yeah. is solely because at this point in time to be successful in business life and, and relationships and everything like that everything that we've talked about in in the last three or four podcasts is so fucking important and powerful mm. and it go and it, and it's going to drive your revenue numbers up yeah, you're going to do better business you are going to do better in life mm-hmm. because of everything that's said in in podcasts Without like this and if this hits your ears at this time it's fucking meant to it's meant to be and, and you're meant to execute on it exactly. i cannot stress that enough yeah. right i cannot stress that that is molly jane <laughs> aka <laughs> Emma Bunnan. Emma Bunnan. <laughs> the, spi- the spicy one. Baby anyway, spice. You can follow me, guys, at Frankie Lee on Instagram. You could, If you could do me a solid favor, yeah, if you've listened to this and you've got anything out of this and we've given you any value at all, which I fucking know for sure that we have, yeah. and that's why I swear with it because it's so, so important, <laughs> go and drop a comment on YouTube. Go and subscribe on YouTube. Go and drop me a comment on Apple. Go and subscribe on Apple. Go and subscribe on Spotify. Go and share it with your friends. Go rate and, him on Apple. Yeah, ra- rate me on Apple. Rate rate me. That on is f- so good for podcasts. Like that yeah. does. I know for a fact that does help yeah. people who are running podcasts. If you can rate the podcast episode, that would be very handy for friends. Yeah, yeah. And and look, just 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 if we've done any good for you, all I'm saying is. There's so many people that say to me, "Oh, I've listened to 40 episodes of your podcast." I'm like, "Yeah, but you've never left me a review or a comment." Like, yeah. so I've so like I just feel like you've taken the value. Mm. Fantastic. Take the value. I want you to take the value. Yeah. But I like, just 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 I'm just asking for a fucking review. Well, do you know what's cool about this? We spoke about boundaries and what you expect from like people at the start of this podcast and we're kind of ending it with that as well. People sometimes just don't know that that's what you need unless you ask. Yeah, yeah. And I ask at the end of every episode. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so do it, guys. Yeah. So just do me a solid favour. I appreciate you. That's Molly Jane. Are She's we a about legend. to finish at 11 11? 1 11? Uh, no, we're not. No, gonna, we're not. We're, we're, we're not. 1 10, so yeah. this wasn't aligned. <laughs> <laughs> that's Molly Jane. Much Please. love. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to the Frankie Lee Podcast.